Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and welcome back to Learn Roblox. It is video tutorials of all the Roblox tutorials on programming and APIs and building inside Roblox Studio. So, um, you should know by now exactly like what we're doing, how we're doing it, stuff like that. But if you don't, then I'd highly recommend that you come over here to wiki.roblox.com and you go to the Learn Roblox page, and you can see all the tutorials that I'm doing right now. And since we did the terrain one fairly quick, I have enough time. We're still inside Roblox Basics, and we're going to do intro to scripting. So, wait, there's a big gap there. Why is there a huge gap? I don't understand. Oh my goodness. Anyhow, link's going to be in the description down below. You can follow along if you'd like to. I'm going to fade this back over, and what is going on? I have lost my screen now. Hmm. Well, why don't we just... Fade that back over like that. Boom. There we go. Now you can see the environment. There we are. And whenever I switch over to scripts, I'm going to have to switch windows as well. So there's going to be a little bit of a pause or a delay in between the, the two switching of the screens. But hope, hopefully that's not going to throw us off too bad. And we can just continue on. So here we go. Intro to scripting. A script is a series of instructions for a program to follow to create custom behaviors. In order to give the uh, in order to give these instructions, you must provide the instructions in words the program can understand. Roblox uses a language called Lua to communicate these instructions. This is a, in this set of tutorials, we will go over the basic instructions you can use in Roblox Studio to create games. Whew. It's a lot to read, by the way. To get started, we need to open the output and command bar. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Just so you know, mine is already open down here at the bottom. This is the output window right down here. And this is the command bar just below. If you don't have these, you can go over to view and you can look for output window select it and command bar select it if you're not set up like i am that is okay everybody has their own taste on how they want their ieds or is it ide uh integrated development environment something like that anyhow it's the development kit um each person has their own flavor this happens to be mine if you want to follow it excellent if not that's fine too go for it uh, the command bar shows up at the bottom of the studio by default and is a place where you can write instructions for the game. The output window will show any kind of text responses from the game and will let you know if we make any mistakes. Print. The first instruction or function we will cover is called print, which makes, the, the, uh, which makes text appear in the output window. In the command bar, type print hello world. Oh my goodness, we're getting started. And we still see what I had last time. So print, quote, hello world, just like that. All right, because that is really small and I don't think you guys can see it. Which which side is it on? It's on that, that, that side, down there, down there, down here. It's really small. So I'm actually gonna open up a script, switch over to the scripting mode and then let you guys see it. So let's fade. And I'm just going to throw into workspace, right click on workspace. I'm going to do insert object. And we're going to put in a script. We'll get into what local script and scripts are here in just a little bit. There we go. Now we can see print hello world. Much better. <laughs> okay. So print hello world. After you're done, hit enter and the output window will show both the instructions and the message that we wanted to print. Print hello world, done. Print will output whatever you put in between the parentheses that follow it. In this case, we printed out the sentence hello world. When you want to print out sentences, which in Lua is called strings, you can surround it, the sentence with quotations, just like this and this. That is a string. We can uh, print other things like numbers. So let's change this to the number 10. Print 10, just like that. Now I'm gonna hit F5 and it should pop up in the output window down below. Okay, we got some other things going on. I forgot what the other things were though. Ignore the other things. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, here, let's do, th let's do this. 
Uh, stop, 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 stop. Okay. So right here, I'm going to type out print. Oh, sorry, can't use caps. Print, output, start. And then right below that, I'm gonna put print, output, end. All right, and if we hit play, we should see the output window down here. Boom, output, start, output, end. And we have the number 10 in between, perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and hit stop, testing, stop. There we go. Uh, and we should be back to the scripting window. Is that actually working? Is it switching in between just fine? Yeah, we're doing good. Keep going, code. We gotta, we gotta get through this. Uh, print will output whatever's in between, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we can print other things like 10. Notice how we did not put 10 inside of quotation marks. If we are printing out a number, and not a string, we do not need to include the quotation marks. It is important to spell print exactly as you see it above with all lowercase letters, just like you saw me mess up. Programs are very specific on how commands are spelled and capitalized. If you spell or misspell or miscapitalize a command, you will see the error in the output window and it looks something like this. And they show a picture, I'm actually going to change it and say capital P. Hit play and we're gonna see this error pop up. Big, red, nasty, attempted to call global print a nil value. Stop. So, change that back down to a lowercase p. Done. Oops. Boop, boop, boop. Done. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, by the way, if you are interested in scripting before I get finished with the, all the tutorial videos, Alvin Blocks. Huge, huge, huge shout out to Alvin Blocks. Go check him out. All your scripting needs. He's an amazing programmer. Variables. In scripting, we often want to store information to be used later. We can do this by using variables. You can think of a variable as a box that you put information in. To create a variable, we need to go, wait, all we need to do is give it a name and assign a value, assign a value to it. For example, my favorite number equals seven. I'm gonna take these out uh, and we're gonna type out the word my favor it number number equals seven just like that so my favorite number is the variable we could call it anything we wanted we could call it awesome sauce or this is the best or code is amazing one thing that we can't do is we can't start it with a number so one my number doesn't exist um, the other thing we can't do is we can't use a any kind of like special characters in front of it I think you might be able to use explanation mark, but you don't want to. In a global variable, you should always use like underscore G underscore something, right? And that would store it under global. But underscore G is actually a, it's a predefined thing. So we'll, we'll get into that. We're just, this is intro. What are, what are you doing code? Stop telling them the advanced stuff. Uh, the advanced, uh, the <laughs> advanced, the above line code stores the number seven into the variable called my favorite number. Uh, first, we we are saying the name of the variable that we want to use. In this case, my favorite number. Then the equal sign says that we want to store something to that variable, into that variable. After the equal sign, we put a value that we want to store. Notice how nothing is added in the output window after the above line. That is because the print function was not used. If we want to see what was stored in there in, inside my favorite number, then we can use something like this. And then they go on to say, print my favorite number, like that. And we're hit play. We should see the number seven and all this other stuff. What is this? Get unique key, where did I do print? Oh, for X, Y, fish values, tokens. Okay, so I can just delete those. Boop. There we go. Yes, I understand. Yeah, that's inside my load save script. Um, let's go down here. Where is the print? There we go. Get rid of that. And close. Now we should be back to normal. Go back to our other script. Is there anything else being produced? Position set to default. Uh, that's inside that thing over there. Okay. So this right here is actually... Got a script 
And it's somewhere. Or is it this thing? I can't remember. If you don't remember where something is coming from, like position set to default, you can always click on it and it'll take you to that script. Whoa, human. All right, so position set to default right there. Just gonna take that out. That way it doesn't show up in these tutorials. We'll try again. Just so you know, I do know advanced programming, so these, the, I'm just showing the tutorials on like how to do this. So don't think down of me. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now we have the absolute of uh, seven, and that's all that we see. So, good deal. You might hear a little coin. I don't know if you can see it, but it's there's a little coin that drops out of the sky whenever I'm starting this game. All right, we can make uh, we can also store our strings inside of a variable, uh, just like we did with the print string before. Blah 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 blah. All right, so instead of the number seven, we're just going to change this to dog. Perfect. So if we hit play. We should see it print dog. Dog, right there, down there at the bottom, over here. So, there we go. Stop, head back over the script, nice. <coughs> variable names. Um, we can give variables to, uh, we can give variables almost any name we want. There are a few rules one has to follow in Lua, though, uh, Though when making name naming variable, this is what I was saying a second ago. A variable name cannot have any spaces in them. Variable names cannot start with a number. Variable names cannot have any special characters except an underscore. Dude, that is exactly what I just said. Oh my gosh, I, I should write my own tutorials. Uh, <laughs> some uh, some words in Lua are reserved for special uses. Um, Variable names cannot be named the same as these special words. For example, for, and, end, if, and while. Variable names should not be, uh, should not be in, variable names should not be the same as functions. For example, you technically could use the word print as a variable, but you would, uh, it would ruin your program. Let's try that, by the way. Let's say print equals at and put it in quotes and then we're going to try and call print that and it's going to fail oh that's going to be awesome oh my gosh there it is it seems to call global print a string value well wow. okay that's funny so don't do that don't name your variables after functions basic math <coughs> ouch uh, we will often need to do math while scripting. Lua supports all basic mathematical operations. For example, if we wanted to print the result of adding two numbers, all we would have to do is this, print seven plus three. So print seven plus three. And they've actually got spaces, which it's a good idea. Good on you. There you go. And hit play. We should get 10. And boop, 10 right there. Didn't know you were going to be doing math in Lua, did you? Just kidding. It's all about math. Uh, we can print all kinds of operations, like 10 plus, uh, 10 plus 5, 10 minus 5, 10 times 5, 10 divided by 5. And I will show you what those are right now. So 10, uh-oh, 10 plus 5. And then we do print 10 minus 5. And we can do print... 10 times 5 and print 10 divided by 5. There we go. So we should get 15, 5, 50, and 2. 15, 5, 50, and 2. Right down there at the bottom. Beautiful. Stop. Um, by the way, if you're being told to do your math homework, um, See if your parents will let you do it in script. For example, your like your numbers and stuff like that. You could always say print, and then in quotations, ten minus five equals in quote double dot ten minus five. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm combining two things. I'm taking a string that says what the equation is, dot dot, and then doing and performing the actual operation and attaching it or concatenating it to the end. So hit play, 
should see down here at the bottom. 10 minus 5 equals 5. Ta-da! Nice. Now, there's no input, I think, from command line, but if you were to do that from an input window, you probably could make a calculator. In fact, I'm 100% sure somebody could produce a calculator by using scripts. But then we're going to get into, like, touches, what happens when you touch a specific block and stuff like that. We'll get into that later. For now, keep it simple. See if you can see if you can just do some prints like that. We can also perform math on numbers stored in variables. For example, my oh, oh come here, come here again. My number equals five. Print my number minus five. Oh, minus four. Minus four. We'll go with four. It says five uh, minus two in the example. This should give us one. Down here on the output window, one. Perfect. You can even store the results of the operation into a variable. So, go back over to the script. And we can say variable sum equals 25 plus 8. And then print sum. Play. Now, for anybody that's watching this and you're in middle school, high school, and you're like, oh man, I'm, I can't use that stuff in the operations that I do. Absolutely you can. In fact, you could get into some crazy long stuff. Um, what's a good example of hard math? Square root. Is there, is there a math function dot square root? All right, square root of... 144. All right, so we're going to do print math dot square root of 144. Play, should be 12. Oh my gosh, it does square roots? Yeah, it does. You could also do uh, print math dot pow 12 comma two. So we're going to do 12 to the power of 2. Should be 144. 144. So there's more complex math in here. The tutorial itself doesn't go into it, but it does say how to change properties of parts and stuff like that. So that will be our next tutorial that we're going to be covering. For now, I hope you've enjoyed this Learn Roblox in Scripting and all the examples that come with it. No, I'm not gonna post the script itself. The script is already out there. You guys can see it yourself. It's inside the wiki.roblox.com tutorials. Thank you everyone for watching this episode. Love you guys very much. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all those cool things I'm supposed to call out like a cool YouTuber at the end of all the videos. But for now, we'll talk to you very soon. Outro.